Coming up on this episode of The Village Idiom. My optometrist is an Eskimo. Okay, give it to me. Yeah. You can see it. You can guess I'm, I'm seeing an optical illusion. <laughs> dum, dum, da, da, village Idiom. Hello and welcome to The Village Idiom. We are a podcast that every week we choose a popular saying, take it admittedly shallow, hopefully comedic, once in a while interesting, if we're lucky, educational, dive into its meaning, its usage, its origins, but we're also going to use it to hang our otherwise directionless conversation on. My name is Jurassic Mark. I'm Skinny. And this is... Hey guys. Fantastic. This is little L joining us for today's podcast, or at least in part, it my is daughter. Fantastic. Happy New say. Year, everybody. How are you, years? Happy New it's Year. It's been a good one. Did you have a good Christmas? Yeah. Was there something exciting that you got for Christmas? Makeup. 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 <laughs> nice. In the morning when I wake up <laughs> and I put on my makeup, <laughs> I say a little prayer for you. Yeah. So was it uh, lipstick? Nope. You got some lipstick. Facial. Facial? Facial. Fashion show? No. Special. Special? Yes. Ah, uh, something special. Oh, that sounds awesome. She did get some lipstick too, though, right? Yes, Mr. Grinch. All right. <laughs> it's been a good Mr. Mr. Grinch, Grinch, I'm the one that bought it. <laughs> well, it has been a good Christmas. Thank you for coming on to the intro. All right, high five. We'll call you out for the ending. <laughs> so, sounds good. <laughs> How was your Christmas? It We've was, talked about it already, but... It was good. The new year was like crazy yeah yeah did you light it up did you get lit <laughs> not quite you know how i roll i haven't i haven't lit nothing in many years there's no lit no, no. how about you illegitimate children we'd love to hear from you uh if you had something special happen for yeah, what do you do or good ideas like like you hear people doing these creative things, whether it's a family trip or, uh, oh, actually, we went out, we, they did fireworks at blah, 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 or uh, we stayed at such and such. Like, I, I love hearing people's creative things of how they celebrate. So let us know. Give us good ideas. I, we were pretty chill this year. Um, my my favorite New Year's Eve uh, was probably 15 years ago, 10 years ago. I don't even remember, but... We we were at a church service, okay, and uh, for a number of years there was this church service that we always attended, and, and it was a little bit of a dry service, but you know, with our the way we wanted to bring in the new year, <laughs> a stuck zipper here. <laughs> for those of you, you, you audio only listening, it looked like you were concerned about getting your neck. I was caught in the zipper. <laughs> Anyway, we would, after this service, because we were always at the service and all of our friends were halfway through their night of partying, we just decided, well, let's just invite whoever is lingering. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you want to come over? And we usually had snacks. And so it was really interesting because we had these friends or is that families. The Peters? the Peters? Were you at the Peters, in the basement suite then? Uh, there and when we uh, lived with the Struts. Okay, okay. But it was like, Whoever was around, like, what are you doing tonight? Oh, we're just being chill. I came to church. I'm like, I come over and we'd have snacks or whatever. So it was just these little surprises. So this one, probably the last year we did that was uh, our pastor and his wife. Hmm. And they're like, what are you doing? Nothing. I come over. And as they showed up, power went out. The whole city went dark. Okay. New, New Year's Eve. And uh, so we lit some candles. Were you planning we're, on partying? Is that what happened? It, we were just hanging the out. The Lord smote your party? Maybe that's what it was. Hide the beer, the pastor's here. Uh, <laughs> That's a classic, that classic <laughs> phrase. Uh, but, so like yeah, we just couplet. lit some candles and we chatted. And then at midnight, our boys were there. with. They had some friends over, but they were completely different because there was no electricity. So they weren't playing video games. They were just hanging out. And so midnight countdown, lit some sparklers. They engaged with our pastor and his wife. That's it was pretty fun. Like, yeah, it was, it was a special night. Not Not very exciting as far as New Year's parties and extravaganzas go, but... It was a special one for me. It's fun. Yeah. It's the it's, it's always something good. Do we even tell them what we're talking about today? It's New Year's Eve. Or it was. It was. No, oh, like, but as far as like no, we, today's content matter. Do 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 we ever? I think so. <laughs> well, it's very relevant to everything we've been said. So it, let's just jump right in. Are you ready for I'm this? Con you can convince me of anything. Uh it's not working because I don't know what I'm doing. 
And instead of starting it, I'm renaming the file. Listen, you can sell ice to the Eskimos. <laughs> so it's close. That says you can sell ice to the Eskimos. Uh, no, that's it. So selling, I, yeah, selling ice to the Eskimos. selling ice. I was thinking it was something else. Selling ice to the Eskimos because the origins that I'm aware of has another word instead of ice. Oh, okay. So selling ice to the Eskimos. Sell, sell ice to an Eskimo. That is today's idiom, and uh, we will just preface. Well. Go ahead. Well, I think of like New Year's. Some people ring in the in the New Year's, and it's something that we always, you know, you got to have a a kiss. Ring in the New Year's with a kiss. Unless you, <laughs> we're going with Eskimo kisses. Yeah, Eskimo kisses. Happy New Year. <laughs> so, Eskimo kisses. I tried it with my wife, but she wasn't into it. <laughs> yeah, she's she's crazy uh, like that. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh there's all these little funny little new year's traditions wow that was fantastic <laughs> i was i was over the winter when we had that big dump of snow i was trying to uh stack these snow cubes into the shape of a house and they would not stick together so you know how i finally got it to work it glued it glued it <laughs> i just made that up right now <laughs> Uh, we'll get into it in, in origins, but, uh, just to announce it now, we are aware that to some, not all, which we'll also discuss, Eskimo can be uh, a, a pejorative. The, is it? The word. Yeah. So throw it that is. out there that we're not, of course it is. we're not, uh, unaware. You, so what snuck up on me when I was researching for today and uh, popped it in it, it popped out that the word eskimo was considered derogatory by by some and i was like i just i literally never thought of it like yeah. that way but during the pandemic july of 2020 our one of our canadian football league teams the edmonton eskimos changed their name, changed their name. but it, with all the pandemic stuff it slipped right past me i didn't i didn't find out till today really that the edmonton eskimos are now the edmonton Ed- elks. elks yeah yeah I thought I was just like, oh man, you just snuck that one right past me. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's for that reason. What's well, it's, in, in the season of all these teams with uh, anything that could even Washington Redskins or yeah, that one's a little on the nose, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, Kansas City Chiefs. I think that one they kept right. Sounds good. Yeah. I, I actually have no idea. I don't follow sports much. Yeah. But yeah, the uh, I, I don't know because like. If if I was to make fun of something or thinking saying it in a derogatory, would you invest your franchise and well, that's all the, like the all the resources and everything that goes around that into something derogatory? But so as opposed to like a, a this is a slippery slope conversation, but that that's the argument is this was not intent. Like why would we name our team something that we thought was derogatory we wouldn't we named it because they're triumphant warriors right they're survive they're, they're meant to be like honored su- survive like crazy conditions yeah yeah so yeah. anyway uh my my optometrist is an eskimo okay give it to me yeah you can see it you could guess i'm i'm seeing an optical illusion <laughs> there's wait you're Say it again. <laughs> you what? have to explain it. That's no good. Your my eye doctor your is an Eskimo. Eye doctor is an Eskimo. I guess you could say I'm seeing an optical illusion. 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 The Illusion Islands. The oh, that's why I don't know that. I don't know See, that. if I have to explain, that, I don't know it, that term. The Illusion Islands, like up by Alaska. The Illusions. Nope. He's an optical illusion. I know what you're saying now because you've explained it to me. I've never you heard just of the illusion. All islands. the fun out of it, though. I've never. This is funny. Spatchcock. Part- <laughs> 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 she wasn't into it. So that one, that one made sense. Uh, yeah, sorry. I'm not as as knowledgeable as you. Well, uh, it's a like a, that's why we have you here. <laughs> it's like all, all my my special words. Yes. That and just your infinite oh man, that's not infinite, good. but your depth of knowledge on so many so, fields. So <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. So I did come across a, a couple of like um, comparative phrases that have been used. Hey, Leland, have Thanks. 
I have come across another uh, couple of phrases that are used by differing places that I really that convey the same thing okay. that, that amuse me. Yep. Okay. So it was uh, giving a drink of water to a drowning man. Interesting. Yep. It was like. One would argue yep, that you uh, uh-huh. could have a drink while you're drowning because the drowning part is the water in the airway. <laughs> okay. So fair enough. you could have a drink. While um, drowning. Uh, bringing sand to the beach. <laughs> is that a saying? Yeah, bringing sand to the beach, and so it was. Uh, what does that mean? That uh, one, like just this is, compl- like, this is un- unnecessary. Okay, it's like bringing sand to the beach. Okay. Yeah, um, but this one <laughs> pushed it over the edge for me. Teaching grandmother to suck eggs. <laughs> what? <laughs> of like, what does that mean? And so it came across this old like uh, uh, car- cartoon. So it was the, the the premise behind it was that at a certain age, you know, and maybe dental care wasn't the highest back in the day in the you know eighteen hundreds ish era. And that, so Granny had no no teeth. And in order for her to get some protein, would there, suck raw eggs. You, yeah, you'd suck you'd suck uh, the, the the like the contents of the egg out, pinhole in it, suck the contents of the egg out. And so the, the, it was teaching grandmother to suck eggs. So you don't need to teach her because she's pro. Because she's already good. It's like teaching grandmother to suck eggs. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, I think what, everybody can relate what to does that. that mean? Yeah. yeah. So that one just hasn't come around again. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Teaching grandma to suck eggs. Like selling ice to an Eskimo. I'm going to start using it. Yeah. Somebody does something just super redundant. Uh-huh. You know what that's like? It's like teaching your grandmother to suck eggs. The the room would just halt, like silence. What are you saying? Yeah. So, anyways, all, all these little uh, f- fascinating. So, how would how would you use selling ice to an Eskimo? Not that you would, because of the potential pejorative. But how would you use th- this in like conversation? Well, we should we should say that by definition, it's meant to be. Because I was just about to ask you if you've ever been in sales of any sort, of any job you've had, have you done sales? Because it's meant to prove that someone is an is so excellent in their capabilities to sell things that they could sell something to someone who doesn't need the something they're selling. So right. they're in Tommy Boy. There's a great one. Uh, he could sell ketchup packets to a woman in white gloves. I think it's something along those lines. <laughs> That's amazing. Right? Like it's it's like you could sell anything. Right. And so, yeah. Have you ever been in sales where you've had to? I work at a game store. Uh, oh, yeah. You're doing that part time now. It, yeah. And so it's a thing of sales is like you can, I don't know, you kind of get a vibe for when someone's like sold. Yeah. Stop talking. Like, right. Yeah. You don't need to explain further. And I've like had to learn part of that like the hard way where you're just like you and like person's like oh like actually this sounds really fascinating like whatever and they're like they're in and then he's like oh but you know there's these other options to do whatever whatever and it's like you can watch them just fade away is with information overload right yeah you just yeah okay yeah something like that would be great for you interesting yeah, yeah. just stop talking i used to work in a music store and i would full-on judge people like judge a book by its cover based on what they're dressed and how they looked walking in the door and switch the in-store music playing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You said it it was a game for me. Can I get them to go, well, what's this playing right who now? Who is that? You will never guess who I popped into my brain out of nowhere today. And it was very much influenced by you. Okay. The W's. That is so funny. So today, I'm Why like, did that pop into your head? I have no idea. It's the you are the devil and the devil is bad. No joke. Like 10 minutes before you got to the studio today, yeah. I'm scrolling through Instagram reels and it said, will somebody please make Christian Ska cool again? And it was a shot of the W singing that song. <laughs> no. Yeah. So Don't. I haven't thought of them forever, but that came up as a video 10 minutes before you got here. It was because... Oh, I know! I know exactly. As I roll the clock back, this is like happening real time in my in my brain. Um, on I got together for a D and D night on like uh, Sunday, uh, a, few, a few Sundays back. With um, you're playing Matt. Dungeons and Dragons on the Lord's Day. Well, all days are the you Lord's are the day. devil, <laughs> and the devil all is days the... are the Lord's Day. Okay, continue. Yeah, and so he only asked for one tenth of them, <laughs> and so. Seven percent. Some some would say. <laughs> that's right. Um, that's like so, a flash. That's two flashbacks the last week. 
<laughs> and so uh, I got a call from Matt Ratcliffe from Cab Sergeant. Wow. Uh, Jeremy was there, Nathaniel, and a couple of so uh, the whole band friends. but me, the whole band but you. Huh? And I'm not recognizing it till right now that that's why it was in my head. Probably because you guys played that song. Yeah. You played trump trumpet, trumpet, and, and then ended up singing. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, that was just a little flashback Super for fun. you. Yeah. Super fun. Wow. You are the devil and the devil is bad. That's, hey. That's phenomenal. I have, I have a, this is not related to the idiom, but it is related to the word Eskimo. Okay. Uh, when I was a kid, so my dad, he's very funny, but they're spread out. It's not like slapstick funny guy all the time. No, he's the dry funny. But drive funny, or they're just he waits for the good ones. <laughs> and and I remember once, there's a few times where he would be funny. I now look back at how funny it actually was. And I may not have recognized at the time, like, and it was usually when we were, I, I, he was giving me a ride somewhere. So I remember, <laughs> I remember him. Uh, we're driving down the street, and he sees this bus stop. Just I'm in probably seventh or eighth grade, and he sees this bus stop lined up with high schoolers. And he just pulls up to the bus stop. We're in a car. He is a bus driver, but we're in a car. Okay. Pulls up to the bus stop, just looks forward, stops, full stop at the bus stop. 30 people standing there and rolls my window down. I'm on the passenger side, and I'm just like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he just looks forward as my window slowly rolls down. And all these people kind of looking like, you pulled up here and rolled your window <laughs> down. What do you want? Anyway, that's clearly not an Eskimo story. The other one was once he sees this lady walking. Sort of in our neighborhood, like as suburbia as a neighborhood as you can imagine East Vancouver being. No like touristy attractions mm-hmm. nearby. We're in like houses and elementary school land. Mm-hmm. He pulls up to this lady, excuse me, excuse me. None of us, like my whole family's in the car. None of us know why he's pulling up to this lady. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, yes. Uh, do you know where the Eskimo uh, village to visit around here is? <coughs> She's like, I'm sorry, what? He goes, there's an Eskimo <laughs> museum, village, something like that. And museum. And she's like, no. He's like, well, have you heard of it, though? Like, is it, if I turned around, and he just doesn't let her off the hook. Like, if I turned around and head that way, would would we, like, where's the Eskimo village? I'm so, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm genuinely. <laughs> I'm from I'm in, this area. I don't I'm, know. Yeah, I'm intrigued. I would like to visit. I don't know where it is. But are you from around here? Yeah. But you've, And you've never heard of the. He would just like, okay, well, thank you. And we drive away and all of us are just like, what was that? That actually makes you make a lot more sense. How <laughs> random that is. It's so random. That's, that's, you got a little touch of the Ernie's. <laughs> touch, just a touch, touch of the Ernie. Ernie's. Yeah, so good. Uh, it's, yeah. So, um, that's my Eskimo. <laughs> so when I, I, d- I did come across that, I was like, why is it a, like a, considered a derogatory term and and i can't you know people can yeah you know, i'm not in the middle of this as like a life so i just trust the people involved to know what they're talking about um so it was that um eskimo um through various um different tribes whether it was uh oh, this is all origin stuff right here oh is it yeah okay well we can jump into origins like the, i didn't know it was the origins. definition of uh where the word came from and stuff. Yeah, is that gonna, is that going to come in? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's jump into origins then. Yeah. Well, that, I need more of a segue than that. Hey, <laughs> guys out there, do you know where an Eskimo village is? All right, let's get into it, shall we? I said some words. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? No one can know. I turned around and looked behind. Those words came from another mind. All right. Well, the phrase Eskimo or the uh, the phrase itself refers to the the word. Let me start over. The word Eskimo uh, refers to numerous indigenous peoples of the world's typically frigid, snowy, northern circumpolar areas of the globe uh, who would consequently have an abundance of and no need to buy ice, which is why it's such a difficult sale. And if you're a true salesman, you could even sell ice to those who don't need it. So uh, we're going to proceed with caution mm-hmm. because we the Eskimo the word Eskimo is regarded as insulting or pejorative by some. So we're going to kind of get into etymology again. So this is from an article 
uh, about the... Ready for this? This is what the article is about. Okay. The monopolistic control of the anthracite industry by the coal trust as far as west as far west as Chicago. Wow. That's what this article is about. Being a published pet. in the San Francisco Examiner. Uh, Just in another 19- case of being oppressed by big anthropology. Anthrop- <laughs> monopolistic control yeah, of the anthracite. They got the control on it. Uh, here's what it says in 1904. Every dealer was a victim of a spy system out of the trust. If it were ascertained that a retail dealer, dealer not on the list of the association had obtained a cargo of coal, the fact was reported at once to the association and some revengeance meted out to the concerned selling to the retail dealer. You with me? Kind of. Kind of. The association was bound by ironclad laws not to sell to those not on the list, and the man who had not the favor of the trust association could no more sell coal in Chicago than he could sell refrigerators in the Arctic region. Funny. So that is one of the older references, not quite the Mm -hmm. idiom, but that's why I thought I had the wrong clip in the beginning because I had refrigerators in my head. It came from and is actually still commonly used, although I've never heard it literally is selling refrigerators to Eskimos. Okay. Or ice boxes to Eskimos. Selling ice boxes to Eskimos. Yeah. So that's a tongue twister. <laughs> so nineteen oh eight. She the, sells ice boxes by the to the Eskimos. To the Eskimos. <laughs> uh the Charleston Evening Post. Uh let's try not to read the whole thing. Um uh, so the very last line of this post is um let us remember that they are heavily laden with eau de cologne and bear testimony to the commercial enterprise of our German friends. Perhaps we could sell refrigerators to the dwellers in Greenland's icy mountains. So we're getting a little closer. Um, in 1912, it evolves to... Uh, uh, we get the word Eskimo. So in 1912, from How to Be Beautiful by She's a Bear. Her name is She's a Bear. That can't... She's a... S-H... I... Wrote this down. I still didn't know. She's a S H E E Z A. It sounds like you're being pranked. And the last name is B A E R. She's a bear. She's a bear. Anyway, that's funny that I didn't catch that earlier. Uh, For the complexion, this article says there are many remedies designed to improve the complexion. Red cheeks are always desirable, but natural red cheeks among married women are about as common as refrigerators among the blonde Eskimos. Hmm. So it's getting closer. Weird that she added the word blonde uh, to that. Uh, then we get to 1915 in the... Uh, I'm reading all these because it <clears throat> evolves to the one we know. In 1915, in the Fitchburg Daily Sentinel, it says could sell refrigerators to the ex- Eskimos uh, and not be turned down. So anyway, we can see an evolution that eventually winds up being as selling ice to the s- selling ice to an Eskimo. Oh. So the cultural thing... Oh, sorry, are you going to jump in? No. The cultural thing you, I mean, I think everybody has heard the name Eskimo, and it usually refers to, as you said in your pun earlier, the Inuit and their culture, whether, uh, um, which is interesting because Eskimo and the Inuit is like predominantly a Canadian thing, Mm -hmm. but not the word. The word is kind of global. Um, so it's a term that's been out of, out of date since 1980 when the word, when the name Inuit, which means people in Inuktitut. Uh, the word Inuit was uh, they're, recognized. They're just really cold. Yeah, they're, they're just shivering. In- in- it's just a nuck. <laughs> they're from a nuck. Where are you from? Inuk. No. Doesn't Inuk actually mean people? Like, I think it's just Inuk is another word for people. Well, so what? So Inuit means people in people in? Because Inuit means the people in Inuktitut. Inuktitut, yeah. So it was recognized by the Inuit Circumpolar Council the Council that they are now called Inuit. This is uh, to, to denote Inuit groups across the Circumpolar region, which is Canada, Greenland, USA, Russia. Sounds good. And so today, Eskimo is considered a pejorative, and here's kind of why. So according to Inuk author and translator, Mini Ayodla Freeman, the term Eskimo came from another indigenous language in Canada, Cree. Which is yes, a this is the part I was that I'd run across. So in Cree the word is I'm probably saying it wrong, but Eskimao. Eskimao. Es, or possibly oh, Eschimao. Eschimao. I did it two more times. Which roughly means eaters of raw meat. Mm-hmm. So Eskimo, 
pronounced in Eskimo, roughly means eaters of raw meat. So Freeman explains that the word developed after the Cree first encountered mm-hmm. Inuit and found them eating raw meat, which is a way of life in the Inuit that is like proudly continues to this day, actually. Eating raw meat is not unusual so, even so today. I'll jump in on this part. Okay. So, so what was amused me was we don't want to be called Eskimo. Which, whether it's Eskimo or Eskimo, yeah, or, or yeah. any version of this, whether it was Cree or Algonquin, eaters of raw flesh, and then it's like, well, do you eat raw flesh? Yeah, we eat that. Yeah, you know, proudly, it's, it's pretty good. We really like it. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's like you know, pe- so people who eat that. people who eat haggis. We just don't want to be known. You guys eat haggis? Hey, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, but actually, if, that's it, the Scottish. If all of a sudden, we called Scottish people just haggis haggis eaters. Ah, you bunch of haggis eaters. I don't know. It's kind it of... sounds pejorative. Like, okay. We have a That's name. A... We have a name. It just, you know. Yeah, but as, as far as like a sidekick, if you're like, ah, you haggis eater. Ah, burger eater. <laughs> See, I just think it's funny. <laughs> Maybe it's wrong because I think many things are just funny. Well, that's... If the... I just called you a burger eater, you a pasta eater. And there, to be fair, there are some... Indigenous... If it was the food from your region, like, is that just everything that the, you eat the food from your region? Yeah. You're, you're... That's, what, that's who you are then. Like your burrito eater, burrito eater, one eyed, well, one horse. There burrito, you go. There, eater. there are Mexican derogatory names based on food, like be- beaner or something like that. I don't know. Something like okay. Like I'm probably being insulting right now, but, but everybody everywhere eats beans. Yeah, but that that was a thing. Like okay, new immigrants from Mexico were called that. So, yeah. So the food was called muk muk tuck, which I thought was amazing. Like how many things have tuck in it? Right. So it was muck tuck, a piece of whale skin with blubber or from a narwhal. Oh, no, that's a head. nip and duck. <laughs> that's when you get fixed up when you're in, <laughs> when you're an Inuit. I'm, I'm an Inuit person. Okay, let's just, let's just do a little quick role play. I'm an Inuit person heading to... I'm not, I'm not doing accents in this one. Okay, we don't have to do accents. <laughs> I'm an Inuit person going into a plastic surgeon. Uh, to get a little work done. Okay. Yeah. Bing bong. Hi, how can I help you today? I'm not going to do accents either. <laughs> <clears throat> Ironically, I felt like it was going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> and I stopped myself because it's cause That's it's why I good. said it earlier. Okay, here we go. Bing bong. Hi there. How can you, do you have an appointment today? I do. I'm uh, really excited. I've heard good things about your work. Great. Yeah. Uh, can I just get a name, please? Uh, yep. Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for sure you'd add a tuck to that. Frank Tuck. Frank to Tuck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Frank Tuck from uh I'm part of the uh the council. Okay. And I'm here uh, you know, just see what kind of uh Looks services like we got you've had you today. here for two oh, we don't have an appointment for you then. Well, seeing what's available. All right, yep. Is well, there like any specials that you perhaps uh, are running? Absolutely, yeah. It depends on what you're looking for. We can do Well, I've got this uh I'm really concerned. I've had this sweater. I'm concerned about zipping my uh, neck right into into my sweater. So you want the waddle yeah, I, I need to have that kind of sorted out. Is there kind of something that you could have done? Absolutely. Yep. What would you? What, what kind of procedure was that? Well, just if you look right here on the on the menu, mm-hmm. <laughs> we've got to the uh, classic uh, neck neck to tuck. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So neck, is that neck, part of neck, the neck to tuck? Is it neck to tuck? Is uh, that part of the nip and tuck series? Uh, no, that's a little lower. So okay. Nip, nip and tuck is uh, we have a the, the stereo nip and tuck, hmm. uh, where both nips can be tucked. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Both nips tucked. It was like some sort of augmentation or something, some yeah, a reduction. That's right. That's a that's a, a nip and tuck. I see. Well, and and which is funny. Uh, that's, that's not, not really funny w- that your name is Frank. But if we Frank fr- the tuck, if we go further south, there's a there's a Frank tuck. I see. Well, I really appreciate your time. Uh, yeah, I'll just uh, I'll just be heading out now. Thank you. Okay. And see. And see. <laughs> Both. Oh, that's too good. <laughs> yeah, uh, so having uh, so the muck tuck, um, so I, I just found it interesting. It's like what we call eaters of raw meat. A raw please don't call us that. But do you eat it? Yes. Yeah, we really like it. <laughs> it's a real and we thing. Still do and 20, we, and we still do. We still do. It's still probably. a big thing. Yeah, it feeds our people, and well, they do really well. How come they don't have to eat vegetables? <laughs> I've heard about this. So, um, so. 
if there's generations, the carnivore diet will never work. No, oh yeah, no, have you ever heard of it? About, it's all about uh, generations and generations of people living in the land and off the land. You can develop um, your body will evolve, so to speak, to get the nutrients you need based on what's there. So the way we eat is actually terrible because we don't eat things in season anymore. Hmm. But they're two of the healthiest groups. I eat seasoned things. Two of the healthiest groups are like tribal level generations of people who've never sort of modernized. Uh, one is the Inuit that have, that have continued to live off of like flesh and fish. And there's really no vegetation at all. That sounds amazing. And South Americans. How are you tonight? We're having and South Americans, which was bean and corn, hmm. very little meat, and both were. This is a study done more than twenty years ago. Both were in that generational, like hmm. we've always lived this way. And so bodies adapt to healthiest bodies on the planet. I'd heard about the muktuk, that that food that is it. They said it's an excellent source of vitamin C. I'm like. Raw flesh, raw meat, muktuk, whatever it was, uh, which is usually served raw. Usually served raw, muktuk is an excellent source of vitamin C. I wonder what muktuk is. It was this, it's the raw, so I, I just went th- through it. Oh, the, uh, oh, the things you listed. Piece of whale skin with blubber, uh, often from narwhal. Oh, right, bo- I cut you off and said that's a nip and tuck. <laughs> so yeah, that, the, that, the muktuk, high in vitamin C. Interesting. Yeah, but, if, but, but don't tell us. If that. the meat you're eating if that animal ate a ton of oranges. <laughs> so do you think they had to like knock I mean, over fishing boats? Because well, you are what you eat, but wouldn't it also be true that you are what, what Mostly you eat? Mostly water weight. <laughs> <laughs> if you are what, what you eat, you are what you eat, then you would also it would also be true that you are what, what you eat eats. Right. So we're all just kind of vegetarian. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Uh, let's continue on. Another, um, where was I? Mm-hmm. Are we out of time? We are, we are way out of time. Okay, really quickly. <laughs> another possible origin story uh, is a, a different... It's from the Quebec-based Inu, which is Awasamu. Awasamu, which does not sound like Eskimo to me, but Awasamu. Eskimo. Awasamu. I don't know. They say it came from that, which roughly me- translates into one who laces snowshoes. So it's the same thing. Where I this, heard I, this also came up. Yeah. So it's the same sort of mean thing. Like, did, do you lace snowshoes? Yeah. I, no, but they have excellent snowshoes for what they do. So it's like, yeah. So, it, so I don't want to knock and say that it's not pejorative. It has been decidedly no, made a of all pejorative people thing. To decide we're um, not those people. So uh, it is uh, accepted by some indigenous people and others not, like trying to re-own the word kind of thing that does happen in cultures. Um, and so, yeah, that's where it came from. That is... Eaters of raw meat is where it came from by mistranslated, mis- hmm. mislabeled um, introductions between tribes and Cree and, and Inuit. Inuit. Mm-hmm. Inuit yeah. Fascinating. That's good. Okay. We should probably get into the riddlings, you dirty burger eaters. Man, I can't. <laughs> Not booger eater. I said burger. So, it, so the kids we can call booger eaters. <laughs> Ah, you. Okay. Uh, Riddling is a game we like to play. It takes a two-part trivia-based question. requires a two-part overlapping answer, overlapping by sound, syllable, word, or word. So, for example, again, last week, which we've referenced twice today, uh, we did Saving for a Rainy Day, and we left you with this one. When you put some money aside for a more precipitous time with my left foot's Daniel. When you put some money aside for a more precipitous time with my left foot's Daniel. I'm going to go with Saving for a Rainy Day, Lewis. That's right. It's not saving for a rainy day. It's not day Lewis. It, the correct answer is saving for a rainy day Lewis. And that is how you play Riddling. Fantastic. Well, I've got a couple prepared. I got a couple prepared. I heard boogers are high in vitamin C. <laughs> Depends on what your boogers ate. Ready or not, illegitimate children, here it comes. <laughs> past the teeth, past the gums. Here we go. This usually served raw Inuit food found in three wheeled Asian taxis. Oh, wow. This is my favorite one so far. This usually served raw Inuit food found in three-wheeled Asian taxis. That's got to be muk tuk (laughs) tuk. It's a muk tuk tuk. That's great. It's muk tuk and tuk tuk, right? Yeah. Muk tuk tuk. That's great. All right, I got one. Uh, In Cree, the word is eschimau. Roughly means what eschimau roughly means in Cree. Tell me one more time. In Cree, the word is Eskimo, roughly means what Eskimo roughly means in Cree. 
<laughs> so you, you totally brain melted me. In Cree, the word is Eskimo roughly means what Eskimo roughly means in Cree. I'm so confused. I can hear the words and I'm just wrapped what up. What does Eskimo mean? Eaters of, of raw meat. Right. Meters. Eat. <laughs> eaters of raw meat. The uh, story just you. The eaters of raw meat. Eaters of raw meat. <laughs> Close eaters of raw meters of raw meat. Oh, that's funny. Okay, I got another one. We gotta we gotta hustle here. Okay. This Inuit pejorative sung by Notorious B.I.G. This Inuit pejorative <laughs> sung by Notorious B.I.G. Is it Eskimo money? Mo problems? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, I got one more. Let's okay. keep it moving. <laughs> Village of children, you can uh, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you on ah, Instagram. They know, they, know, they know how. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Here it is. If you used to play for the CFL's Elks, you were this when you rub noses with someone else. Fantastic. One, one more time real quick. If you used to play for the CFL's Elks, you were this when you rub noses with someone else. And that is three minutes gone. We are, we are out of time we're time. way out of time. My I bad. apologize. Okay, I'm skinny. I... Oh, wait, we're out of time. I'm Jurassic Mark. And these are the village idioms. You must never do a tango with an Eskimo. That's three minutes gone.